I'm in kidney failure now. We made the decision to donate his organs. Post-transplant, positive change. Make the most of donating some part of our body. It's up to us to embrace the changes. Help save lives. Pass it on. I um, was diagnosed with Berger's disease, it's a rare condition. Unfortunately I've had to give up work because of my symptoms. It is quite sad actually because I've always been active, always been on my feet um, helping patients and now it's happened to me. Um, I'm in kidney failure now. My kidney disease would uh, really affect a lot. You can't go to, you know, work how I used to. I can't do the jobs which I needed to. So I can't um, carry out um, everyday activities of daily living. So, you know, cooking and cleaning and maybe washing your hair. Um, all these things does have an impact on me and it does get you down. I have been restricted a lot what I can do, what, what I can eat and what I can drink. Now I'm on the transplant list and, and I'm hoping for that phone call, um, you know, whether it's at three o'clock in the morning, just to say you've got a donor. That would be um, a miracle for me. That would help me to, you know, be back to normal um, and give me uh, another chance of, um, you know, living again, living my life again. Give a difference to people like me who'd have the life quite normal. There's lots of Asians out there who are in the same situation and I think it's important that we all support each other and raise awareness together in our Asian communities. Ashni was 12 years old when she passed away. Loving girl, through special needs as well. As well as that, a few years later, she was diagnosed with ulcerative colitis. But you know, she never complained in life. She carried on. She was, you know, she, she was well loved at school. Always dressed in pink. You know, I called her, I used to call her my pink princess. Ari was three and a half years old when he passed away. He was a gentle, kind, and thoughtful soul. He died after getting caught in the blind cord at home. He spent four days in hospital and we knew he wasn't going to survive, so we made the decision to donate his organs. When she felt ill this one particular time, they found out... Uh, that she, she had a um, blood clot to the brain? They tried their best to, you know, to stop, stop the bleed, but it was too, too much for them. You know, we made a decision between ourselves that uh, we'd give her up as organ donor. Just to help others. We were given an amazing 24 hours more with him. And that time was precious to us. It didn't feel like he was treated like someone who had passed away. We felt like he was still treated like our son. At no point did we ever feel pressured into donating his organs. And it was our own decision because I felt that we didn't want any other children to suffer. Ari couldn't be helped, but we ho hoped that he could then help other children and other families be together. You know, it was our choice. We wasn't forced into it by anybody whatsoever, not by the doctors, nurses or anybody. And they found three recipients, as she was a pancreas, lungs and a kidney. And a kidney was given. They were able to uh, use his heart, liver, pancreas, uh, small intestine and uh, his stomach. The hardest thing probably for me was telling my mum. My mum is a devout Hindu and I didn't know because I hadn't had a conversation with her. To my surprise, she said she was extremely proud of um, our decision. She was extremely proud of Ari. What I hope Ari's legacy will make people think about is to have uh, a conversation with their families and loved ones and discuss organ donation. I'm sure it'd be quicker to take one in a heartbeat, so why not give one? I was on dialysis for two years uh, during an important stage in my life. I was uh, prepping for GCSEs. So at times during the school time, I'd be coming home doing dialysis. 
effectively four times a day. It impacted quite a big part of my life, socially, educationally, and my mother who was caring for me at the time. So she was part-time working, she was part-time my carer. And they said, you've got to live with cirrhosis. And they said, you might not live long. And I was losing weight day by day and getting slim. I depend on my daughter's man wife to look after me. I didn't know the liver come in time to save my life. All I wanted was to try and live a normal teenage life and I would hope that one day a call would come for me with that kidney transplant. After the operation, and I'm quite active, I do the walk every day for 20 odd minutes. And after, after six months, I was like a young boy again. Post-transplant, positive change, massive difference from being on dialysis. Now I'm able to have my dream job, able to go on holiday, do social events with my friends and family, and I was not able to even think of this being on dialysis. A low chain thing, yeah, but she organ was that a mercy, never done a jingy, so that's a jay, that's a married navy life. I so as Hindus, we believe that this body is perishable. The Atma, the soul, is immortal and nothing will accompany us after death, nothing physical. So why not make the most of donating some part of our body which will be of no use to us and could be of great benefit to somebody else by saving their lives or enhancing the quality of their life. It is indeed an act of great punya, great merit and will bring good karma to our Atma. Hindu belief universally is that we're not the body um, and and so therefore the their unteen text in all our scriptures uh, which promote organ donation Dan and seva are the two key features of hinduism and Dan, organ donation is probably the highest Dan one can do after donation donating the any organ of your body the final is, is normal. The usual rituals, what we call the Antim Sanskar, Antyeshti Sanskars, can still be performed in the normal way. A Hindu Sanskriti is also the one that is 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 the one so, I will tell you that you will be able to do this. 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 There is a very urgent need for more transplants. In my own area, which is heart disease, a heart transplant for somebody who has got severe heart failure can not only be life transforming but life saving. Organ donation is really considered after everything possible is done uh, to save the life of that patient. Our main role is to support the family and to support the patient. And organ donation is part of end, normal end-of-life care, so it's something that should be offered to all families, regardless of um, preconceived ideas about family dynamics, um, race, um, religious um, beliefs, those are all taken into consideration. It is more challenging to transplant people from the black, Asian and minority ethnic communities uh, for two reasons. Uh, the first reason is that there are more people on the waiting list um, because of the diagnoses in particular of uh, diabetes and hypertension um, in these groups. And secondly, there is far fewer uh, potential donors um, from these groups and this results in us having to wait longer for these patients to be transplanted compared to the uh, general population. There are many misconceptions about what the organ retrieval process uh, can do to an individual, concerns about um, disfigurement, um, harming and making the person they know and love look very different. I can assure you as a retrieval surgeon that is not the case. After the donation has finished, um, the support for a family doesn't stop there. Um, that's ongoing um, for as long as a family wants it. It's up to us to um, embrace the changes with education and making the discussion around organ donation a normal part of our own cultures.
Register your decision on organ donation. Pass it on. Talk to family and friends about your decision to donate. Pass it on. Save lives. Pass it on. 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 Pass it on.